A new documentary film gets its premiere in London this week, and Christ Spiracy claims to uncover a 2,000-year-old cover-up regarding how the teachings of the Bible and other religious books have been doctored over the years to the benefit of the farming and animal products industry. While making the movie, acclaimed filmmakers Kip Anderson and Cameron Waters found themselves stalked for four months and then had their camera equipment and memory cards stolen. Let's qu take a quick look at a trailer for the film. Is there any threat or danger making a film like this? Yeah, you just wait and see. You just wait and see. They will stop at nothing to keep this truth from getting done. Is there a spiritual way to kill an animal? Um, I'll, I'll put it this way, how would Jesus kill an animal? Is there a peaceful way to kill an animal? <laughs> I think we need to wrap things up. Looks very intriguing, doesn't it? I've got the co-director Cameron Waters with me now. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So, You've had huge success with your previous films, which are on uh, Netflix. You ran into a few problems when it came to Christpiracy, didn't you? Yeah, exactly. Um, when we got to the moment where we presented our first edit, there was a number of things that were a little bit on the edgy side that it created a conversation. Hey, some of these things we might want to pull back. And Kit, my co-director, and I had a really tough conversation, and we decided that we had to go the renegade route and essentially buy our rights back for the film and release the film on our own. We have a lot of respect for Netflix still. Uh, it was an amicable thing, but we knew that we needed to tell the story the way that it needed to be told. So effectively, people won't be able to watch this on Netflix, but they'll be able to watch it through other channels other ways. And that gave you the artistic freedom that you needed for this thing. Exactly. And in fact, uh, what we're doing right now that we would have never been able to do if we had released it on Netflix is we're doing a theater premiere. So that's right. why I've come across the pond over here to actually premiere the film on March 20th. Uh, one night only, it's going to be in theaters in the UK here. Very exciting. Now, uh, I don't want to re reveal too much about the film. What can you tell us about what's going on here? Because it's an old mystery that you're attempting to solve. Right, right. Yeah, it's a 2,000 year cover up. And what I would say, you know, to you, Andrew, or anyone who watches this program, uh, Free Speech Nation, the, the name of it is that the speech of Jesus Christ himself has been suppressed and altered over the last 2,000 years. One key statement coming up on Palm Sunday as we're going into Holy Week, there was something that was said in the temple. We all know it as the den of thieves, correct? Jesus called it the den of thieves. There was something else that was said. I can't give away what it is on this program here right now. You have to go see it in the theater, but it's much worse and it's much more condemning than what he actually said. Because, what we think? Well, because what you see in that trailer is various religious figures bulking a little bit at some of the questioning. Uh, and you did make an effort to go and speak to all sorts of religious figures, didn't you? We did, we did. So we came over to Oxford here and talked to some of the top theologians. But beyond Christianity, we talked to experts in uh, uh, Judaism, Buddhism, Islam. Uh, uh, we, we went across the board, but especially in Christianity, the through line of the film, we've got Oxford professors, uh, biblical archaeologists, professors of biblical hermeneutics that are confirming these findings. And this is to do with the slaughter of animals and the treatment of animals. Can you give us any more detail or should we leave that for people to see the film? Well, yeah, I mean, just backing up for my story, I'm a born again Christian. I was baptized. Um, I was a gospel musician and wrote gospel music for Sony Records. But I started to ask these questions when I learned that 90 billion animals are killed every single year, farm animals on, on the land. If you include the fish, we're talking trillions every single year. 99% of that is factory farming. And we all know, I think, and agree that factory farming conditions are some of the most horrific around the world. It's essentially modern day slavery for these animals. And as a child, I grew up, uh, I have a bracelet that I wear, what would Jesus do? It's popular in America, a question that we ask ourselves, what would Jesus do when it comes to moral and ethical dilemmas? And for me, this felt like a huge one. It felt like one of the biggest, and I had to find out what was the answer. Is there a better way that we can do this as humanity? Is there a sense in which there are some people who would rather you didn't explore these issues? Because you mentioned, or we know that you were stalked during the process. You had equipment stolen. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes. Yeah, so actually, Kip was in San Francisco at the time, my co-director. Uh, he had his entire place ransacked. He filed a police report. Four days later, I had my van. I was living out of my van at the time. That's for the last seven years to be able to make this film that I've dedicated my life and my blood, sweat and tears to. I had to live out of a van to, yeah. to make it happen. My van was ransacked and we were out filming. We came back and we had 
footage from Israel that we had filmed and everything, and it was gone. It was taken with, with the camera equipment, yeah. Wow. Well, you've made other films, Conspiracy and Seaspiracy. There are, what is it that attracts you to certain topics to address in this kind of documentary format? Right, right. Well, you know, Kip, my co-director, he was the one that made Cowspiracy and What the Hell, and then I, I was a part of Seaspiracy because I was making this. But what attracted me personally is, like I said, I came from a, a Judeo-Christian background, and I've been devoted to God my whole life. And, um, you know, I see animals as God's creatures. And when I learned and started to understand the kind of atrocities that are happening in these slaughterhouses around the world, the different types of methods, a lot of suffering, um, it definitely was something that weighed heavy on my heart. And as you see in the trailer, uh, it led up to the moment of me actually met, uh, meeting Kip because it was so hard for me to ask these questions to my own peers in church. When I asked them a question, is there a spiritual or ethical way to kill an animal or let me be more blunt, how would Jesus kill an animal? They kind of would tighten up. It's an uncomfortable conversation to have. But I really wanted to find the right way as a good God-fearing Christian. I wanted to know, is there a right way to do this? And so that led me up to the moment of meeting Kip and deciding to make this film together to find out if there is a way. And some of the clips look a little bit uncomfortable with some of the individuals that you're talking to. I mean, when you approach that kind of interview, do you give the, uh, the interviewee preparation? Do you say, these are the kind of things we're going to talk about? Or are you trying to get that kind of legitimate reaction in the moment? Right, right. Well, yeah, some of the interviews that end up uncomfortable, I mean, we go Go into it really wanting to learn. As we always say, this film is all about asking questions. It's not about coming with any answers. It's not about trying to make anyone uncomfortable. It's just by nature, our society has put a wall around this conversation. Literally, the slaughterhouse doesn't have, you know, they say if slaughterhouse gla had glass walls, everybody would stop eating animals. And it's true because this is something that no one talks about. So it's like the big elephant in the room, right? Um, so, in a sense, when certain people are pressed on certain questions, yet yeah, becomes uncomfortable. Uh, do you consider yourself a kind of activist, just using this as your medium? Uh, I'm, I don't know. Do you think I'm an activist? What do you? I, well, no, I, I, I wouldn't want to put words into your mouth. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, it feels like you, you're trying to get a message out there. You know, it feels like you want to affect some kind of change. Yeah, well, no, to me, again, coming back from my heritage, I'm trying to get the message of Christ out there. Um, right. It's not my message. It's something that's been talked about for 2,000 years. And you'll see in the film, everyone who watches, uh, this message could literally transform history. Uh, it's already been transformed for the worse because this message has been suppressed. So I'm hoping that the true message is, is released. I do love the way you're tantalizingly teasing us with, with, with <laughs> what it could be. But the revelation should definitely be saved for the actual film, of course. Absolutely. You have a website where people can find more information. I think you've got a new trailer out, have you? Yeah, we're dropping a new trailer tomorrow, mm -hmm. actually, throughout all of our social media. But yes, our website is Christ. Christ Spiracy, not Christ Piracy. A lot of people get it wrong. Yeah, Christ Spiracy. dot com, and you go to get tickets. And right now in the UK, tickets are selling fast. We've got theaters sold out, uh, basically sold out in Oxford and Milton Keynes, um, and theaters are selling out fast. And it's one night only, March twentieth. So we March twentieth, really, March twentieth here right. in the UK. Yeah, and it's also in the, for the people in, in uh, across the pond who are watching by chance. Uh, we have the 20th and the 24th on Sunday in America, and the 24th is Palm Sunday, which is the, uh, the big day that Jesus said what he said that we're going to reveal. And what kind of uh, reaction are you anticipating? I hope a really good one. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people uh, that are challenged and want to cry uh, heresy and all of these kind of things. But, um, you know, we just, we're just asking questions. And so we hope to just start a conversation. This film really only scratches the surface of this conversation, to be honest, because 90 minutes isn't a long time to go through five different religions and dig into this issue. But uh, it does a pretty great job at scra scratching the surface, and we hope to keep the conversation going. Great. So Christspiracy, remind us of the website address again. Christspiracy.com. Uh, and you go click Get Tickets. Fantastic. Cameron Waters, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.